And coming up later today on 2, we have the boys back with a new episode of Top Gear. However, now we're going live to Television Centre to bring you an afternoon of sport with Trevor Lynham and Sunday Grandstand. Good afternoon, welcome back to Grandstand here on Trevor Sports as well. It's a pleasure to have you with us and it's so pleasing to see that so many of you are enjoying our take on the modern PlayStation and Xbox games. We have a fantastic show for you today on Grandstands. Hopes to remind you of those wonderful afternoons. So sit back, relax and enjoy the next half an hour. With you today, we'll be bringing you the highlights of an absolutely classic game in the Premier League played yesterday. It's Sheffield United and Burnley, and trust me, you're not going to want to miss this one. We've got action from all the way in Japan in the World Touring Car Series as the return of Nigel Mansell continues. Can he take victory? We have Trevor Walker there to bring us the action. And as well, folks, in our main feature today in Grandstand, we've got snooker action and a one-frame shootout between Judd Trump and Ronnie O'Sullivan. We will be going to the Crucible and join Trevor Virgo for all the action later. So in a rundown to our show today, we've got football for you. That's coming next. Don't go any for that game. That's an absolute cracker. We're then going to be bringing you action from the World Touring Car Series in Japan. And then we will bring you on our main feature today, snooker action from the Crucible. So first and foremost, let's go kick off and show the highlights of an absolutely fantastic game in the Premier League. And joining us there in, in Bramall Lane for us was Trevor Davis. Welcome here to Bramall Lane and this is the Sheffield United. Henderson makes goal. Baldock, Basham, Egan, O'Connell and Stevens will be the back five for them. Lundstrom, Norwood and Fleck across the middle as well. And McBurney and Robinson are the centre forwards here, here for Chris Wilder's sides. With Burnley, their impressive Premier League start continues. And Sean Dyche is lucky to take no injuries and take his preferred starting 11 here today with Nick Pope starting in goal. Loton, Tarkovsky, Ben Mee the skipper and Peters here at left back. Goodmanson, Westwood and Cork and Dwight McNeil in a traditional 4-4-2 with Wood and Ashley Barnes as the two strikers here today. Danny Drinkwater though just makes the bench. So Lundstrom. Robertson Bulldog Robertson again nice pass McBurney good stop Nick Pope best moment of the match here at Bramall Lane Sheffield United really starting to make something of this here's Westwoods here's Woods oh, that's a fine pass this is Goodmanson as well these options he's got Wood and Westwood charging into the box the pass was attended for Alls Woods Cork wins the header Westwoods, Cork again, Dwight McNeil, it's a cross which is tipped away, just for the moment worried 
Sheffield United skipper. 21 minutes gone. Oh, he had to reach that, the keeper. Bit of sixes and sevens, but he's pleased he's got that. Here is Cork. Being able to find Dwight McNeil. This is Bulldog inside. Fleck. McBurney. Fleck again. Side Bulldog there. And now is Norwood. Here is Fleck charging into space. Stevens here out on the right. Flag stays down. The cross is in. McBurney was going in there. I think that's an old no. They won't matter how for Sheffield United and for Fleck, whose crosses ended up in. McBurney was finding his way into space here, though, up against Eric Peters. Oh, it's a Peters' own goal. You can see here when this cross comes in, look at this. Peters, it's even off his arm. Well, you can almost argue here that that's a penalty and a red card, but... Good restraint being showed. Peters, sadly, though, has got an own goal against his name. Referee again waves play on here. Good advantage shown. This is Robertson. Cork. Stevens. O'Connell. Norwood. Fleck. Out wide to Bulldog. Good touch by Bulldog. Crosses floating in. And Pope had to push that away. Oh, so close. And for the earlier challenge, McBurney has been booked. Referee was waiting and waiting, and both teams are furious with that. This is why. Oh, he was right through the back of Ben Mee. Corner to be taken here. Norwood to take it. Looking for McBurney. Found him and it's straight at Pope. Oh, well that was a chance. McBurney's header and it has been well stopped. Quite comfortably in for Nick Pope. Dwight McNeil with the options. Can he find an opportunity? Eric Peters suits own goal is the separation between these two sides at the moment. Here's Westwood. Jack Cork again. Just need an ID here as we approach stoppage time. And it's a head of the Mike Titus off the work of Woods. Attempt again goes over. And Burnley trying to find something. Jack Cork's effort. It's a goal! At long last, Sheffield United couldn't hang on. And Jack Cork has got the equaliser. Just look at this Woods header. It was the initial effort that was off the bar. Cork sliding in. It fell awkwardly. The clearance was made to stop it going over the line, but then suddenly look at this by Jack Cork. Finds himself with perhaps the easier of all the tappings he's ever faced in football. Oh, it's an eager own goal even. Oh, well, Sean Dyche will be delighted here. Ball was obviously already all over the line when Jack Cork got to that. It's 1-1. Well, it's a tale here of two own goals that separates these sides. That says way more about the game. There is plenty in this, and both sides showing moments of quality here. While there may be two own goals, it's not that sort of game. 1-0 here at half-time at Bramall Lane. O'Connell. Stevens. Fleck. Norwood. Here's Lundstrom. Bernie. You need to turn. Here's Robertson straight to Pope. Corner signal. Robinson knows that was a huge chance. Found himself through. It was on his favoured foot as well. Nick Pope to the rescue for Burnley. He is Westwood. He's got space Westwood. Playing Jack Cork, who scores this time. Well. 
Officially, it'll be an own goal for when he scored earlier on. There is no doubt about that. That was an excellent goal by Jack Cork. The former Southampton and Swansea man here showing us a real coolness of goal touch here in front of goal. Controlling this with his left, finishing with his right, blasting it past the Sheffield United keeper and giving Burnley the lead. They now lead by two goals to one. Can he find his way back here? This is McNeil. From Burnley at the moment, Peters. Dwight McNeil. Back to Peters. Looking for a cross. Peters has provided it. Header is back. And Westwards! And Henderson had to make the save. And had to make the save to keep Sheffield United in this. And that was a good stop. It was hit at power. It was good hands to tip that round the post. Peters. And Burnley at the moment, they're enjoying themselves. Jack Cork. Oh, nearly! And John Flex day is over and Luke Freeman is on for Sheffield United here. Jack Cork, Westwood. Peters, Woods, Barnes, Basham makes the interception, this is Luke Freeman now, into Robinson, Freeman again, he's got an option to the right of him, if he can see the pass, that was just Norwood, is running into space, three in the area for Sheffield United, and that is the equaliser by McBurney! A fantastic counter-attack, and there was McBurney to head home, and there is the equaliser for Sheffield United. And when the pass came through, the cross was an absolute treat as a centre forward. It's what you dream of. Nick Pope could do nothing in the goal from six yards. The centre forward is always the favourite to get to that. And at Bramall Lane here, it is Sheffield United 2, Burnley 2. Number eight, Danny Drinkwater. Here's Westwood, goes on, passes through. What a fantastic attempt that nearly was by Chris Woods. Oh, that would have been goal of the season if this had connected. What a volley that was. And it's just skipped past Henderson's goal. Westwood. Danny Drinkwater. Ben Mee, oh that's not very good, it's broken here though to McBurney here who's got an opportunity to run and get past Peters as well and Sheffield United are throwing bodies into the box, Ramon Morrison is one of them, the cross is just over! Oh McBurney that needed to be a lot better, there was four bodies charging forward into the box. In the end the cross wasn't good enough. Morrison, way to Egan, Ben Mee, Tarkovsky. The fourth Just official has yes, Chris Wood. there will be a minimum of four minutes. Four minutes of time added on, we're entering here. Here is Barnes, here is Chris Wood! What a save by Henderson! Sean Deitch knows that was the chance. Chris Wood here with a fantastic volley. Henderson, look at that, just get something to it. Oh, it's so close. Well, two all on a fabulous game of football played by two sides that really have gone at each other, hammer and tong today. The points are shared here at Bramall Lane as well, but this will win a lot of fans. It was two all here. Those Premier League games go, that was an absolute belter and it just shows you the quality that there is within the Premier League currently. 
Moving from one sport to another, we're going to go halfway around the road now and bring you some action which took place earlier on this morning. It's from the World Touring Car Series. And if you remember earlier on this year on Grandstand, we brought you action from Brands Hatch as Nigel Mansell went ahead and made his winning return in the Williams Renault again. Well, he's back this time and he will be in Japan for this racing action for us. There's no time to waste. Let's go and bring you the action and let's go join Trevor Walker for World Touring Car. Well, welcome all here to Suzuka and welcome to a Formula One Spec Grand Prix circuit that's hosting World Touring Cars, but is hosting a former Formula One World Champion. The winner of 28 years ago, Nigel Mansell, was back behind a competitive car by his old partner of Adrian Newey and the Williams-sponsored Renault Megane here is hoping to make an impact today is Suzuka. So this is it, this is what we're waiting for, the Suzuka circuit. And we're lights out and away we go here and Mansell's start isn't as good, he seems to have lost a little bit of time off as well in 11th place into the first start as we approach turn one and going down the inside of the Alfa Romeo driven by Paul Rivera. A little bit of contact, I think Mansell might have just got away with that and he's been able to climb up a few places past Blanco as well. Now into 7th place, past the Canadian Nicolas Poul. Continues to go and just gets a little bit untidy here. Poul comes back in the Lamborghini, here goes Mansell again, just coming through. Third gear, coming up to about 85 miles an hour. Continuing to build into power, feeding it to about 90. They didn't look hard naturally drift wide here, though. You can look him fighting for every bit of grip that he can find in this car. He's got Garnier here, the Frenchman, which he goes past, and he hangs on with everything and just even clips a curb, and I think he's even gone into the back of uh, Magnini here in the Bugatti. There's Mansell again, powering through the gears. Fourth gear now, changing it up from five miles an hour. No, they're breaking heavy. Second gear down to 40 miles an hour around the tight left hairpin and onto the power again. And this long sleeping, sweeping right hander here as Mansell tries to fight everything he can from, from this Williams winner again. The power coming through here by Mansell and the braking heavily as they go ahead and make a left turn. And then it will start them. Towards their approach and the climb uphill, in which he will be reaching just close to your maximum speed, fifth gear, 130 mile an hour. A chance to get past Vincent, the Brazilian. Heavy braking, 100 mile an hour. He's going to be taking that hairpin at left hander into the power into the first stadium complex before the chicane. Heavy braking down to second gear at 40 mile an hour through here. Rocco and two Megans past him. Mansell here into the stadium complex as well. Kun here, the uh, Austrian driver. And Mansell's past him and he has the two other Megans. Gary White ahead of him. And Valeria Corras, the Finnish driver, ahead. Mansell here keeping the power going and he's really got this. Williams Renault again absolutely singing for him as he flies through. A series of lefts and rights and just forces his way past Gary White and now he's got the works again to chase down here last lap was a 2.22 this could be around about the two minute mark without the start and it looks like he's going to get past Valerie acquires quite easily indeed he is and now Mansell just has to hold his line and just look how hard he is pushing this car, this is something else. Some of the speed that Mansell is doing here today is just exceptional. Running slightly wide again before the tight right hand turn and letting the car naturally drift out before putting on the power ahead of the left hander. Over six tenths quicker in that section in his previous race, heavily braking. Second gear, 40 mile an hour. Power goes down here as well, sweeping right, and Mansell will just keep the power down. As they start to go around a final left and then they've got the sweep up the hill over the old track and down towards the chicane in the stadium section. 
130 mile an hour braking from 70 mile an hour. That's what you're doing in a on a national motorway here. He's doing round the corner here at Suzuka, Nigel Mansell, and he is winning, and he goes a little bit wide, but not enough that's going to worry himself. Valkyria Kohas and Gary White are in second and third in the two on a Renault Megane, but it's the Williams Renault Megane, which is absolutely flying, 140 mile an hour. He breaks from, this is seriously quick from Mansell. He's setting a pace, which I don't think anybody in this lineup can deal with at the moment into the chicane section to deal with as well and then he's going to come round and he will come through and win and Mansell's well and truly back here in touring cards for Williams well done that was outstanding the Williams Renault again reigns supreme again here in Suzuka The legend of Rev 5 lives on, but this time in a Renault again, Nigel Mansell victorious. I'm sure that'll spark a few memories of some brilliant afternoons watching sport. And a reminder that we do have Grand Prix action for you. We will be here on the 1st of December to bring you the final race of the season from Abu Dhabi as well. Join us for that. And now we're going up to the other key venue in Sheffield, the Crucible Theatre, where we have snooker action and we have the one frame shootout to bring you between Judd Trump and Ronnie O'Sullivan as well. This was an absolutely cracking contest so far, but remember, this is the final frame that will settle this to take us through the rest of the afternoon here on Grandstand. It is Trevor Virgo. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. The first frame, Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. He's going to uh, spread the table straight away, so I think both of these players are looking to attack. Two. Part of the green, that was well done by Judge Trump. Five. He's got such control, Trump, when he plays. He's Six. Got joy. Oh, that's a bad miss. Hoping to table up for Sullivan here. Judd Trump, six. Eight. Fourteen. Break fourteen at the moment. Sullivan. Fifteen. Some excellent twenty two great control tricky green this it's made it. 
26. Sneak down. Nope. And he survives the Ronnie tower. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 26. <laughs> He's yet to uh, find his uh, aim today, Joe Trump. One. Snoopied himself. Oh, he might have snoopied himself. Oh, that'll be a foul. That'll be a foul. Oh, and another consecutive fouls. Sneaks home. One. Oh boy, that was prime rocket territory, that. Uh, he's missed that relatively simple black. Ronnie O'Sullivan, one. One. Behind in this frame. By 22. He's going to stay 22 behind. <sighs> and survives another foul, possibly. Judd Trump, one. Six. Deep pocket to get. He's got it. Trying to go for the safety here. Has he overcut this? Might have. Judd Trump, have. 13. One. Can we finish it from here? Eight. Ronnie O'Sullivan, eight. 17 behind Joe Trump is, 27 remaining. Pretty much got to pot everything to win this now. In sequence. Two. Three next. And he that with a plum. And he's got enough power to bring them all back up the table. Five. Blue. 
Nine. Swing tight. He survives it. 14. Oh, he's got to get this pink. Make it 14 here. He must make this. This will put him with the chance to win. Oh, no. Judd Trump's missed it. That Judd was his Trump moment. 14. And Neil Sutherland gets this. He's the winner of the Masters. He does. <laughs> Ronnie O'Sullivan gets it. He's back to seal things. Going to take all the time in the world here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there is your winner of the Masters of 2019. Friend and it's Matt. the Rocket, Ronnie O'Sullivan, who defeats Doug Trump here in the Crucible. we got the highest break of Sullivan. And won by 57 points overall. Well, what about that, hey? A fantastic, fantastic result and a wonderful afternoon for sport here on Grandstand for us as well. Uh, we have a final few Premier League results to bring you, so let's bring you those. And don't forget to join us next week where we have our main feature will be match of the day and we'll be bringing you the big highlights between Liverpool and Tottenham at the top of the Premier League well thank you very much for joining us here on Grandstand as well we've hoped you really enjoyed it if you've liked this video hit a like for us at the bottom of the page don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification buttons to be reminded of all the next videos that we have for you and from all of us here in Grandstand thank you so much for watching and have a lovely evening bye bye and